sinking and you just can't keep your head above water. Or like you're running out of everything, money, energy, friends, hope. Do you ever feel like you need a miracle? I'm Carrick Thomas, lead pastor here at the Journey Church, New York City. And if you feel like you need a miracle right now, then today's message is for you as we continue our new teaching series on the miracles of Jesus called I Need a Miracle. Thank you for joining us today at the Journey Church on our YouTube page. We have an amazing service planned, including some great music from our worship arts team. So click the subscribe button below so you don't miss out on any future Journey services or videos. And you can also click the thumbs up button below to let us know that you had a meaningful experience with us today. And while you're at it, click the share button below and you can share the link of this service by text, by email, by social media with a friend who might also find today's service meaningful. And then while you're at it, check out the links in the description below or click on the QR code below. And there you can fill out uh, an online connection card. Let us know that you were here today take some spiritual next steps plus there's a link to download the message notes to follow along in the scriptures and you can click the link below to worship through giving during today's service too now let's go to our worship team on stage as we begin today's service I used to believe some men stole you would like me if you knew me that I had to strive to see your glory I was taught to believe that you were distant that you'd drag me down if I could miss me that grace wasn't free I had to earn it to earn it but I'm a learning and I'm so glad I was wrong about you yeah yeah Now I know the truth oh, oh. I used to think that you were angry That there were conditions to your mercy And if I worked hard enough that you would save me You would save me But I'm a learning and I'm so glad I was wrong about you I've never been more glad to get it wrong
didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate? Hey, welcome back and welcome once again to the Journey Church, New York City. I'm Carrick Lee, pastor here at the Journey. And I want to thank you for joining me today at Church Online as we continue with our powerful new teaching series called 
I need a miracle, experiencing the extraordinary power of Jesus. And today we are certainly looking at an extraordinary miracle of Jesus. We're going to look at where Jesus healed a blind man named Bartimaeus, because today I want to talk to you about what to do when it feels like you can't see. When you can't see your way forward. And a lot of times we have spiritual blindness or situational blindness. We can't hear God's voice. We feel lost. And if that's you, today's message is going to be just for you if you need a miracle in your own life. So whether you're a first-time guest, regular attender, member, you made a great decision uh, to join us today. Now, let me say this. If right now you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, I want to invite you to jump over and join us for the service already in progress on our website journeynyc.tv journeynyc.tv because we've got a lot of spiritual growth resources on our website that I think are going to make your experience at church online today so much better. There are message notes that you can download. Just click that button beside the live stream player and download those notes. You can use them to take notes and follow along during the message uh, today. You can share a confidential prayer request with us on your uh, online connection card. Now listen, even though we're meeting at church online today, I want you to know that we see you and that we love you. It will be our honor to pray for you today. And you can also take some spiritual next steps. There are different ways you can get plugged into the church on your connection card. So speaking of your connection card, let's take a moment right now and all of us fill out our connection card. And we ask everyone to do this each week. It lets us know you're here and also puts you in a great place to take some spiritual next steps. So just scroll down below the video player or if you're on your mobile device, you may have to minimize the screen first in order to see it. But uh, there, you, if you're a member or regular attender, at least share your name and email address and then you can click next. But if this is your first time at The Journey. I want to welcome you. I'm excited that you chose today uh, to check out The Journey for the first time. And I hope you're going to have a very meaningful experience with us uh, here today. All that we ask is that you fill out as much information as you feel comfortable sharing. You'll notice there's a drop down that says, are you a first time guest, second time guest, a regular attender or member? Check the one that's right for you there. And then you see the question, how did you hear about The Journey? Whether a friend invited you or you found us online, however you might have found us, would you let us know that? Then you can click next on your connection card. And that next page is where you can share your confidential prayer request that only our pastors will see. You can also share your mailing address, which is important because we have a free gift that we'd like to drop in the mail to you this week for being our guest today. It's a book I co-wrote with our founding pastor, Pastor Nelson. It's called Unshakable, Standing Strong When Things Go Wrong. And uh, all you got to do is fill out your connection card, click submit, and then we'll drop this in the mail to you today. I think this will be a huge blessing to you. We're glad to give that to you absolutely free. Thank you again for being our guest. And if you click next one more time, you'll go to the final part of our connection card. And that's where you'll see some of the spiritual next steps and some of the different ways that you can get plugged in at the journey right now. I wanted to highlight uh, a couple of things that were coming up that you may want to be a part of. The first thing I want to highlight is that coming up next Sunday, uh, April 21st, is the Journey's No Excuses membership class. And uh, we say it's no excuses because we try to remove any barrier that might keep you from coming to membership class because it's such an important spiritual step of faith to become a member of the church. We're going to provide free child care if you're a parent. We're going to f- provide a free lunch. So all you got to do next week is attend our 11.30 a.m. service in Times Square and then walk over after to our Faith and Life Center just a few blocks away. We'll have lunch. We'll have child care. And you can take, you can, well, if, in membership class, it's going to be a lot of Fun. I'm going to be there with our pastors and staff. We'll pull back the curtain and share everything we can with you about the mission, the vision, the core values of our church, and then you can decide whether or not to become a member. But if you're not yet a member, I hope you'll make a decision to be at that membership class on Sunday, next Sunday, April 21st. And then another great opportunity is that if you're a follower of Jesus but you've never been baptized, Don't put it off any longer. We're going to have one of our biggest baptisms of the year coming up on Wednesday, April 24th. It's our baptism and worship night. And we're going to be at Trinity Baptist Church, a really beautiful church on the Upper East Side of Manhattan on 61st Street. And they have a beautiful um, uh, 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 building that we're going to meet in. And we're going to have our baptism there. uh, uh, But before the baptism, we're going to have a worship night. So everyone in the church is invited for a special night of worship. My growth group is going to be attending together. So we'll have a night of worship followed by a special baptism. Uh, And so if you need to take that step to be baptized as an outward sign of your decision to follow Jesus, what better way to do it? Uh, Let us know. Check that next step and we'll follow up with you this week. And if you just want to attend, you can check that next step uh, as uh, well. One other quick way you can get plugged in uh, this week, this Friday night, is our Young Adults Night. They're going to be hanging out and have food and fellowship and and fun and they'll have a devotion and some prayer. It's going to be a lot of fun. If you're a young adult at the journey, want more information, check that next step. That'll be this Friday night at our Faith in Life Center. 
Well, let's take a moment uh, right now and let's worship God through the giving of our tithes and offerings. I want you to remember that it's your giving that helps our church impact lives for Jesus Christ each and every day. You make an eternal difference when you give. And so you can give today. Just click that green button beside the live stream player or you can go directly to journeynyc.com forward slash giving. And you can give by debit, credit, PayPal, Cash App, Venmo, Google Pay. You can automate your giving while you're there to be faithful. And and whether you're able to give a lot or whether you need to make a small gift, every gift makes an eternal difference. So I hope you'll do that. And if you want to give using your phone, it's really safe and easy to do that. To give by text, simply text the amount you want to give. If you wanted to give $25, text the number 25 to 212-730-8300. It takes about 90 seconds to set up the first time, but it's instant after that. I want to thank you for your faithfulness and and giving in that way. And of course, if you want to give to the next initiative, our 20-year capital campaign uh, to hopefully uh, secure a a permanent meeting location in the future for the journey, if you want to give to that or make a pledge to that, you can go to journeynyc.com forward slash next as well. Well, listen, today, as I mentioned, we're continuing this uh, new teaching series called I Need a Miracle. And today we're going to be talking about when I can't see my way. And uh, before we do that, though, let's take a moment and pray together. So wherever you're joining us for Church Online, let's bow our heads and go to God in prayer. And Father, I thank you. Uh, for all that's going on in our church right now. I pray for our membership class that's coming up uh, next Sunday and, and for all the people who are new to our church to, to, to get plugged in and, and find out what it means to be a member of a church. I pray for our baptism and worship night on April 24th and all the people who need to take that step to be baptized. I pray your blessing upon, uh, upon them as well. But God, today, right now, I want to pray especially for those who are, are, are at church online. They're listening to me right now and they can't see their way forward. They feel lost. They feel blind. They don't know where to go or what to do. I pray that through today's message, as we open your word, you will show them how to draw near to you so they can see, um, they, can, they can move from being blind to where they can see. We love you, Father. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, welcome once again to the Journey Church, New York City. I'm Carrick, and I want to thank you for joining me today as we continue with our powerful new teaching series called I Need a Miracle, Experiencing the Extraordinary Power of Jesus. Now, during this, this new series, um, each week we're, we're studying some of the most incredible miracles of Jesus from the Bible and discovering what to do when you need a miracle in your own life. And today I want to talk to you about What to do when you feel like you can't see your way, when you feel like you're blind, when you feel like you can't see your way forward. And so if you haven't yet, go ahead and click that button beside the live stream player. Download your message notes. You can use them to take notes and follow along during the message today. Now, as a pastor, I often get emails that that say things like, you know, Carrick, I just can't see how this relationship is going to work out. Carrick, I I just don't see how I'm going to make it financially. Carrick, I just don't see a way to get out of this mess. Carrick, I I don't see a way forward. And, And listen, that's why today's message and today's miracle is so important. Because hear me now, how you see impacts everything about your life. Everything about your life. It it impacts your security. It it impacts your your stress. It it even impacts your stability. Everything in your life is impacted by your sight and, and by your perspective. How you see yourself, how you see the world, even how you see Jesus. And so to illustrate this, what I want to do as we begin is I want to show you a a few images. And as I show you these images, I want you to tell me the first thing that you see. Because these images are different. You might see a a couple of different things. But I I want you to tell me what you see first. And so look at this first image. Do you see a vase or do you see two faces looking at one another? 
Now, the two faces are on the outside looking in. The, the vase is in the middle. But what did you see first? Maybe you can see both of them now. I always see the two faces first, but I, I can't see the vase in the middle. And so you see here, it depends on your, your vision, your sight depends on what you see. How about this next image? An old, do you see an old lady or do you see a young woman? Which do you see? Because they're both there. Now, I always see the old lady first. And it takes me a while to be able to see the young woman because I see the old lady in her larger nose, but that nose is actually the young woman's cheek turned to the side. So which do you see first? And if you're with someone, you, got, you can compare how you see. Now, look at this third image. Do you, when you look at this, do you see parallel lines or do you see lines that are a little crooked? They're not, they're not straight. Now, this image is tricky but the lines here are actually parallel. They're actually parallel. And what, what shows you sometimes you see things and, and they're, not, they're not in reality the way that you see them. All right, one more image uh, for you to look at. And this is just a simple, ordinary eye chart. And so you should be able to see this clearly. Can you read the letters on the bottom line? If you can't, you probably shouldn't be driving. I'm just kidding. This is a, blur, this is a blurry chart. It's a, a chart that's very hard to see. Now... Unfortunately, that's how life is sometimes. You know, we find ourselves in circumstances where we can't see clearly. Do you ever feel that way? Like you can't see your way clearly? You can't see your way uh, through a, a tough decision? You can't see your way through a relationship issue? You can't see your way through a financial crisis that's in front of you? It's during those times when you feel lost, you feel blind. And when you're blind and can't see, well, that's when you need a miracle. So today, I want to look at a miraculous story of how Jesus gave sight to a man who was suffering from physical blindness. He couldn't see. And we're going to extract lessons that will help you when you feel like you're suffering from spiritual blindness. Or maybe it's situational blindness and you can't see your way forward. And so, let's jump in. If you've got your notes, you, you can uh, follow along in the passage. It's a longer passage. Uh, or, and I'm going to put the verses up on the screen as well. But we're going to look at the miracle of Jesus healing Bartimaeus. It's found in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10. And we're going to begin in verse 46. Now, let me just make a point here that this miracle ha occurs towards the end of Jesus' ministry. Jesus and his disciples are in the process of making their way to Jerusalem. And it's there that Jesus is going to be arrested. He's going to be unfairly tried. He's going to be crucified. And so Jesus doesn't have much time left. He doesn't have much time left with his disciples. And so they're hurrying on their way to Jerusalem when this happens. We pick up the story in verse 46 of Mark chapter 10. It says, Then they reached Jericho, and as Jesus and his disciples left town, a large crowd followed them. You know, this, is, uh, this sort of stands out to me. I want you to notice that they entered town and they left town in the same verse. And so Jesus and his disciples, it appears that they're in a hurry. They're quickly moving towards uh, Jerusalem. There seems to be a sense of urgency in, in, their, tra in their travel. And keep in mind, uh, in fact, go up into the verse and circle the word Jericho, the city of Jericho. Jericho is about 18 miles away from Jerusalem. And I'll show you a map here. It's, it's positioned near the Jordan River, uh, near the, the Dead Sea. It's about 18 miles, but it's straight uphill, straight uphill from Jericho to Jerusalem. So there's not a long way left on Jesus' journey. Now, you may have heard of Jericho uh, before. It has a prominent place in the Bible. It was about 1,200 years before uh, uh, this takes place. Uh, where Joshua and the I Israelites marched around the, the walls of Jericho seven times and the walls came tumbling down. It was in Jericho where Jesus met Zacchaeus. It, it, it was Jericho that is in uh, Jesus' parable of the Good Samaritan because that takes place on the road between Jerusalem and Jericho, the, the road Jesus and his disciples are about to travel. And Jesus actually restored the sight to several blind men in and around Jericho. And now, here's Jesus. He's leaving this ancient city on his way to Jerusalem. A large crowd is, is following him, and, and they want to get near him. And in the midst of all of this, he has a fascinating encounter. Look at what happens next in your notes. It says, A blind beggar named Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, was sitting beside the road. Now, an interesting note here is that Bartimaeus is one of the few people who Jesus heals that we actually know his name. 
But this miracle must have had such a great impact on Jesus' disciples and those who were there that they remembered Bartimaeus' name to include it. And so I want you to imagine right now that you're Bartimaeus, that you're blind, you, you, you can't see, and you're sitting beside the road, and all of a sudden you hear this commotion, you hear a large crowd coming your way. And, and keep, in, keep in mind, this isn't some small group of people. This is a large crowd uh, following Jesus. They're trying to get near him. And you hear the voices as, as the crowds come nearer. And maybe your first thought is, Hey, this is good news. A lot of people are coming by. Maybe there are several people in the crowd who are going to feel sympathy for me. and They have some spare change that they're going to toss my way. And so you rattle your cup. You make more noise so maybe more people will help you and will, will uh, uh, give to you. But then you overhear someone say that it's Jesus who's coming through. And you've heard about Jesus. You've heard how Jesus can heal people. You've heard that he's healed blind people uh, before. And you've heard, of, uh, you, you, you've heard of other people even near Jericho who've been healed by Jesus. And you want to see, you want that more than anything. And you think, now this is my chance. It's now or never. And then look at what happens next in verse 47. When Bartimaeus heard that Jesus of Nazareth was nearby, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Be quiet, many of the people yelled at him. But he only shouted louder, son of David, have mercy on me. Now listen, isn't it true that sometimes people can be so harsh and so cruel? You know, Jesus is coming through. And everyone wants to see him. Everyone wants uh, to be near him. Everyone wants something from him. Everyone's crowding in. And Bartimaeus is blind. And so he can't see Jesus. He doesn't know where to go. And so his only chance is to act now. And all that he can do in order to get attention is start yelling, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, I'm over here. I'm over here. Have mercy on me, son of David. And so he just starts yelling like a crazy man as loud as he can even in the midst of all this crowd. Now listen, if you're a blind beggar, on the best of days, you're an annoyance, but a nuisance. But even more than that, People naturally look down on you. Not only because you're blind and helpless, but because it was believed the reason you're blind is because you're a sinner. You did something wrong that caused God to punish you and take away your sight. And so it's not just that you're blind, but you're also not a good person either. You're an outcast. You're less than. And so here's Bartimaeus, blind. He's an outcast. People look down on him, and he's acting like a fool. He's embarrassing the entire town by screaming. He's interrupting others who are trying to get to Jesus, and they're embarrassed. I can't believe Bartimaeus is making a scene like this. And so they tell him, shut up. Bartimaeus, shut your mouth. Stop talking. Be quiet. And the Bible says that many people turned on him and yelled at him, probably denigrating him as well. You know how vicious people can be. But Bartimaeus was undeterred. This is his only chance. So he calls out even louder, ignoring the people who are yelling at him to be quiet. Now, it's important to note that that in his yelling, Bartimaeus calls Jesus son of David. Now, that's an important title because that's a title that was given to the Messiah. And so Bartimaeus recognizes that there's something extraordinary about Jesus here, that this could be the Messiah. He believes that Jesus is the one who can give him the miracle that he so desperately needs. And our story continues in verse 49. It says, when Jesus heard him, he stopped and said, tell him to come here. So they called the blind man. Cheer up, they said. Come on, he's calling you. Bartimaeus threw aside his coat, jumped up, and came to Jesus. I mean, isn't it just like a crowd? You know, they they change their opinions with the wind. They go from telling him to shut up to telling him, get moving. You know, you're taking too long, Bartimaeus. He's calling you. Come on, get going uh, you got, if you want to meet him. And it's also interesting to note that they tell Bartimaeus to cheer up. You know, it's possible that after Bartimaeus had called out for Jesus, and, and instead of uh, hearing Jesus, he heard the people around him telling him to shut up and to sit down. Maybe he thought he had missed his chance. Maybe he thought it was too late. Maybe he sat down and began to cry. But with Jesus, as we are learning in this series, it's never too late for a miracle. And Bartimaeus was ready. And when Jesus called, he jumped up and he came to Jesus. We pick up that in verse 51. Here's what it says. What do you want me to do for you, Jesus asked. My rabbi, the blind man said, I want to see. Now, to be honest, on the surface, this seems like a dumb question, doesn't it? 
I mean, Jesus, what do you mean, what, what do I want from you? You know, I thought I was the blind one. I, I'm blind. Of course, I want to see. You know, why are you asking me that question, Jesus? I want to see. You know, it's an important reminder about prayer. Yes, Jesus knows everything. He knows every single one of your needs. But he also wants you to come to him and ask, ask specifically for what you need as a sign of your faith. So that when you receive the miracle from him, you know that it was from Jesus and you give him all the credit and all the glory. You know, the fact that Bartimaeus brings his big need to Jesus and calls him son of David, it shows that he believes that Jesus is the Messiah. It shows that he has faith and he believes that Jesus can heal him. He can restore his vision. And then we go to verse 52. And Jesus said to him, go for your, for your faith has healed you. Instantly, the man could see, and he followed Jesus down the road. Now, a couple of things. Hold, hold here. A couple of things I want to note here. Jesus tells Bartimaeus that his faith has healed him. Listen, never forget. An important component of receiving the, the miracle that you need in your life is faith. Faith is an important com component if you want to receive a miracle. Like Bartimaeus, believing that Jesus is who he says he is and having faith that, that Jesus can do the impossible in your life. Then notice, after the miracle, Bartimaeus follows Jesus. You know, he doesn't just turn away, but Jesus has done something incredible in his life. And so he commits to follow him. You know, when God does a miracle in your life, in the same way, it sh it should, you shouldn't turn away and forget about it. It should inspire you to follow him all the more closely. And so Jesus heals blind Bartimaeus. But right now, I want to fast forward about 2,000 years to our life today. And let me ask you this. Right now, are you having a difficult time seeing your way forward? You know, maybe it's not physical blindness, but it may as well be because you can't see in front of you. Maybe it's spiritual blindness and you're in a spiritual fog right now and, and you feel like you, you don't know where God is leading. You don't sense God's presence. Or maybe you're in a relational fog and it's relational blindness and you, you don't know how to repair what's been broken in your relationship. Or maybe you're, you're, uh, maybe you're unhappy in your career and you feel like God might be pushing you to make a change, but you're, you're not sure what to do. Well, here's a principle I want you to write down in your notes. I left you a little space there in your notes. I want you to write this down. Every miracle has a message. Write that down. Every miracle has a message, including this miracle of Jesus healing blind Bartimaeus. And so when you need a miracle, God has a message for you. And today I want to show you how you can experience a, a miracle so that you can see your way forward. And so uh, in your notes, what to do when I can't see my way. From the story of blind Bartimaeus, here's some lessons uh, uh, that we learned from this miracle. What to do when I can't see my way. Here's the first step. I trust God's plan. Write that in. I trust God's plan. The first step when you can't see your way is to trust that God has a plan for your life. And not just any plan, but a plan that's designed specifically for you. With your best in mind. A plan to help you grow into the person that God created you to be. And listen, because God is omniscient. In other words, he knows everything. And because he's always good and always faithful... You can always trust God's plan. But this can be difficult to do when you're in a tough situation. And maybe you can't see your way out. I mean, you, you have no idea what to do. You have no idea what's coming next. You're fresh out of school. You're in debt. And you have no idea what you should do with your life. Or you have an important decision to make. And you have no idea which direction that, that you should go. Maybe for you, you're nearing retirement. You've worked your entire life. And, and now you're having a hard time seeing your purpose and seeing your direction. Here's the truth. Even when you can't see what's ahead, God can. And even when it seems like in your life that God is silent, He is working behind the scenes for your very best. And that's why you can trust His plan. I want you to look at this piece of wisdom from Proverbs chapter 3, beginning in verse 5. And I, I want to read this verse out loud together. So wherever you're joining us for Church Online today, read Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 out loud with me right now. Are you ready? Go. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek His will in all you do, and He will show you which path to take. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek His will in all you do, and He will show you which path to take. 
I love that. Trust God with all your heart. Even when you can't see your way, God can. So don't depend on your own limited understanding, but depend on God's complete understanding. Listen, no matter how lost you feel, no matter how scary the future may seem, no matter what unknown possibilities lay ahead, you can trust God's plan, seek His will, and listen to His direction. And once you submit to him and you say, God, I'm going to trust your plan. Here's the next step when you can't see your way forward. So I'm going to trust God's plan. And then secondly, I cooperate with God's purpose. Write that in. I cooperate with God's purpose. You know, I told you there's a message in every miracle. Well, there's also a purpose in your blindness. When you're confused and when you're lost. When it feels like you uh, can't hear God's voice. Even then, God is working. But there is danger. Because while your blindness might not be a sin, it can lead to sin if you don't seek God and His plan when you can't see clearly. You know, sometimes rather than than reaching out and seeking God in our blindness like Bartimaeus did, we think, well, I've got to make my own way. I've I've got to chart my own course. I I, I can't hear Jesus right now, so I've got to move forward without Him. But that's a mistake. Because even in the times when you feel lost, God is working behind the scenes for your best. The Apostle Paul understood this in Romans 8, 28. He wrote these words. He said, And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to His purpose for them. God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to His purpose for them. And so God is always working for your good. If you love God, if you're pursuing His purposes for your life, He is always working for your good. And and while that doesn't mean that bad things won't happen to you, it does mean that God can take anything that's bad or anything that's hard and turn it around for your good. But for this to happen, you need to be obedient, even in your blindness. Stay close to God and to His purposes, even in your uncertainty. Let me just tell you, this isn't always going to be easy because there are going to be times when God's purpose for your life doesn't align with what you hope is going to happen in your life. It doesn't align with what other people want to have happen in your life. You know, they told you when you graduated there were going to be a lot of job opportunities. But you had to take a job that you hate and you feel lost right now. You know, you really wanted to get married and have a family, but nothing seems like it's happening and you feel lost. Or you move to this big new city and nothing is going the way that you expected. And you can't see your way forward. You feel lost. Even in these messy moments, God is working in your life and behind the scenes to fulfill His purpose. He's growing your faith. He's growing your character as you wait. He's teaching you to trust Him more even when you can't see. He's causing everything to work out for your good behind the scenes. If you love Him and if you keep pursuing His purposes. It may be tough, but even when you can't see your way, trust God is working behind the scenes for your good, to fulfill His purposes for your life. Now, this brings us to our next step when you can't see your way. So we said, I trust God's plan. I cooperate with God's purpose. Here's here's the third step to take. I turn to Jesus for, for fresh perspective. I turn to Jesus for fresh perspective. You know, the worst thing that you can do when you feel lost and you can't see your way forward, is to guess. It's just to pick a path and just stumble your way forward, hoping that that's the best way. You, you know, you take the next opportunity. Why? Because it was what was in front of you. you. You go out with that person on a date. Why? Because, well, no one else was asking. Rather than feeding into your blindness and making things worse by just stumbling and taking whatever's in front of you, pause and, and ask God to guide you to give you wisdom, to give you his perspective so that you can experience his best. James 1.5 says this in a powerful way. James writes, if you need wisdom, notice he doesn't say, yes, try your best. He says, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. You know, sometimes, sometimes I believe that God allows us to experience spiritual blindness in our own lives. He allows us to feel lost so that in our desperation we will turn to Him for wisdom 
so that, that you'll call out in desperation to Jesus. Just like blind Bartimaeus did. He said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me, a sinner. Because he was blind and couldn't see that, that we, when we experience blindness, that we'll call out to Jesus in the same way. And notice how James describes God in this verse. He says God is generous. He wants to give you wisdom. He wants to give you vision. Remember, he knows everything. He can give you sight if you ask him for it. And so stop straining your eyes to see what you can only see if you had Jesus' vision. His wisdom will give you a fresh perspective and a new mindset. It'll lead you on the path that's closer to Jesus and to the life that you were meant to live. So when you're confused about the future, you're you're in trouble. You can't see your way out. You're at rock bottom with nowhere to turn. Number one, choose to trust God's plan. Cooperate with His purpose. Ask for a fresh perspective. And then, when God answers your prayer, when He restores your sight like He did with Bartimaeus, here's the fourth step. I thank God for my new path. Write that in. I thank God for my new path. Now listen, this is important. Because when God helps you out of your blindness and you're beginning to see your your way again, things are clearing up, he's giving you a new path to walk down and and hope is returning. Thank God for that new path that's in front of you. Thank God for restoring your vision. You know, it's easy when the doors begin to open and you start down an exciting new uh, path. You know, whether it's a new relationship, a new job, you're getting connected in the church, you're finding new purpose. It's easy to forget that Not too long ago, you were sitting on the side of the road, blind, lost. You couldn't see your way forward. And it's easy to forget about the one who gave you your sight, who blessed you. And that's why this next psalm from King David is so important. I want you to read this with me. Psalm chapter 103, verse 2. Beginning with let all. Uh, Read it with me. Are you ready? Go. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he does for me. Would you underline that last phrase? May I never forget the good things he does for me. Listen, during times of blessing, during the times when you can see clearly and you're excited and you have a purpose and and, and a destination and, and life is good, don't forget the good things that God has done for you. And also don't forget the times when you were on the side of the road, lost and blind. Don't forget that it was Jesus who gave you that miracle, who healed you. Thank Jesus for the new path you're on. And let me say this. Even if you're still lost and blind and you can't see your way forward right now, have faith that Jesus is going to restore your sight. And thank God for the new path. You may not see the new path yet, but thank thank God for the new path that he's going to reveal to you and he's going to show you. That's faith. And when God shows you a new path, He lifts the blindness, and you're ready to move forward. Don't forget this next step. Write this in. I follow Jesus in close proximity. I follow Jesus in close proximity. You know, when Jesus heard blind Bartimaeus, the first thing Bartimaeus did, when when Jesus healed blind Bartimaeus, the first thing Bartimaeus did was he used his new vision to follow Jesus. Did Did you notice that? He wouldn't leave the side of the one who had just healed him. Do you know what the greatest temptation is when you've been blind for so long and you didn't know where to turn and and then God gives you the miracle of sight, he gives you purpose and direction? The greatest temptation is to take it for granted, to take your eyes off of Jesus instead of following him to go off on your own. And then you know what happens when you go off on your own? You get lost again, you lose your vision again. The, The vision that Jesus has just gifted you with, you lose. Look, the life of faith, the life of faith isn't, It it isn't knowing Jesus. It isn't knowing about Jesus. Let me say that. The life of faith isn't knowing about Jesus. The life of faith is knowing Jesus personally. It's about a personal relationship with Jesus. It's about following him daily, talking to him, staying close to him. I love what Hebrews 12 says about the Christian faith. This is is our memory verse uh, for this week from Hebrews chapter 12, beginning in verse 1. So I want to ask you to read this one with me as well. Beginning with let us. Read it with me. Are you ready? Go. Let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Listen, if you want to win the race, the key is you keep your eyes on Jesus and you stay close to him. 
You know, if you take your eyes off of Jesus, you're going to fall further behind. You're going to fall further away from him. And pretty soon, you're going to be lost again. Pretty soon, you're going to be blind again. Listen, in your race, in your life, What's distracting you right now? What is it that keeps taking your eyes off of Jesus? What is it that keeps taking you down a path other than the path Jesus wants you to be on? You know, this, this, is, this is important. Lazy, is it laziness? Lust? Love of money? Bad choices? These things will take you away from Jesus and they will deepen your spiritual blindness. Let me give you a few practical ways to keep your eyes on Jesus. A few simple ways to stay close to him and, and, and to keep your sight. Number one, be in church on Sunday. Be in church with your, your church family on Sunday. Be there in person if you can. And then you can be here at church online if you can. But be in church so you're hearing God's word taught. You're with your church family. No exceptions to that. Secondly, be in a growth group. If you're in a growth group, make sure that you stay faithful and that you, you keep attending. If you're not in a growth group, you're going to be able to sign up next month in May for one of our summer growth groups. But that's where you can really uh, engage, meet other godly people, bring them into your life, pray for one another, go deeper into God's word. That's a great way. So be, on, be there on Sunday. Be in a growth group. And then schedule time every day where you read God's word and you pray. You know, stay committed to have a time every day where you're talking to God. And then here's a final way you can stay close to God. Instead of only focusing on yourself and your needs, begin to focus on others. Serve others. Find a place to serve in the church that makes a difference. You know, one way that you can uh, uh, help overcome blindness and take your eyes off of yourself, turn your eyes to others, and that will help you stay close to Jesus, is uh, coming up over the next two weeks, we're having an eyeglasses drive. That's right, you heard me, an eyeglasses drive. It ties in very well with our miracle today with Jesus restoring the sight of blind Bartimaeus. But did you know all over the world in impoverished countries, there are people who have poor eyesight and they have no access to glasses, reading glasses or, or otherwise. And so what we're going to do, we found an organization that collects and then donates uh, uh, used eyeglasses that are in good shape or new eyeglasses and takes them and don donates them in countries where they can be given to people who need them the most. So over the next two weeks that are in-person services on Sunday, April 21st, Sunday, April 28th, we're going to be receiving donations of eyeglasses. So you can bring them. Uh, if they're used, that's fine. Just make sure they're in, in, in pretty good shape. They can do some repairs. And then if you want to buy some new ones and then bring them, donate them, and then we're going to make sure they get in the hands of those who need them the most. Even when you can begin to see your way again, don't go off on your own. Stay close to the one who can give sight to the blind. So when you can't see your way, trust God's plan, cooperate with his purpose, turn to Jesus for a fresh perspective, thank God for your new path, follow Jesus closely, and then finally, here's the final step when you can't see your way. I tell others about Jesus' extraordinary power. I tell others about Jesus' extraordinary power. Listen, any time you experience the extraordinary power of Jesus, it's not something that you can just keep to yourself. You know, you have this burning desire to tell others about how great Jesus is and about what he did in your life. That's exactly what uh, Jesus' disciples, uh, Peter and John, did in Acts chapter 4. Look at what they said. They said, we cannot stop telling about everything we have seen and heard. If you're taking notes, underline those three words. We cannot stop. You know, when you've wandered around in darkness long enough and Jesus steps in and he gives you sight and he gives you a new perspective so that it all makes sense, you're going to want to tell someone. And here's how God works. All around you, there are people who, just like you used to be, they're wandering around in darkness. They need help. They need direction. They need answers. They're blind to the reality of sin and, and brokenness that's, that's keeping them from living the life that God created them to live. It's, it's, it's keeping them from being able to connect with God. They know that what they're doing isn't working, but they're not sure how to break the cycle. They, they can't see their way forward. But you have the answer that they're looking for. You've experienced the extraordinary power of Jesus in your own life. And all you have to do is tell them. You know what? I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was blind, but now I see. And I want you to have that too. And the power of Jesus that gave you sight can give them sight. It can give them eternal life. And then they tell others. And that's how the news of the extraordinary power of Jesus spreads throughout our cities. how it spreads throughout the world. 
You know, today we've looked at what to do when you can't see your way. When you're blind and you, and you need a miracle. You need Jesus' intervention. But I wonder if some of you might be thinking, you know, Carrick, I've heard you talking about Jesus. I've heard a lot of great things about Jesus. But honestly, I've never had a personal experience with Jesus. I don't have a personal relationship with him. Listen, if you're ready for a change, if you're blind and you're ready to see, if you're lost and you're ready to be found, Jesus has the power to change you today. If you've never made that decision to follow Jesus, to to call out to him like blind Bartimaeus did on, on that one day in Jericho and ask him to heal your blindness, you can do that right now as we pray. Wherever you join us for church online, if you would bow your head and close your eyes and let's go to God in prayer right now. Uh, Father, we need you. We can't see our way. We don't know the next step for our career, for our family, for our relationships, for our lives. God, we need you. You know, many of us, Father, have turned to others for answers. but They didn't have the answers that we need. Jesus, we believe only you can help us find our way out of the mess we're in. And so we ask today that you would help us see our way. Now as we continue to pray, if you're ready to become a follower of Jesus for the first time. And maybe you're like, Herrick, I've heard about Jesus, but I don't know him. And I want to know that I'm going to heaven. I want his power in my life. If you're ready for the first time to step across the line and get right with God, pray this simple prayer in your heart with me. Pray it silently as I pray it out loud. Father, I don't know all the right words. I don't have all the answers. But today, as best as I know how, I admit that I've gotten it wrong. I've sinned. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus. He paid the price for my sins on the cross. He rose from the dead. I believe he has the power to change me from being lost to being found, from being blind to being able to see. Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of my sins and make me more like you. Give me a home in heaven when I die. And I commit to follow you for the rest of my life as a part of your church. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, listen. Before we wrap up the rest of our series today, there's some important next, uh, uh, the rest of our service today. We still got three more weeks left in this, uh, this series on the miracles of Jesus. But uh, as we wrap up our service today, there's some important next steps uh, for us to take. And in a moment, we're going to worship God through the, the giving of our tithes and offerings. So if you want to give today, you can be uh, preparing to do that. Just click that green button beside the live stream player. But first of all, if you just pray that prayer with me, and you say, Carrick, I am, I've been lost, I'm ready to be found. I've been blind, I'm ready to see. I'm ready to begin a relationship with Jesus. I want to congratulate you because that's the most important decision that you'll ever make. And all you got to do is let us know that you made that decision. Just click that purple button beside the live stream player that says, I'm becoming a follower of Jesus. Or you can check the next step, I'm following Jesus on, the, on, the, on your connection card. And when you do that, we're going to send you a packet in the mail uh, that includes a book called uh, The Next Step for Your Journey. We want to be an encouragement to you as you begin your journey of faith. We're, we're so excited that you're taking this step. You can also email us, email follower at journeynyc.com if you want to let us know you made the decision to receive this packet. Or you can text us. Just text the word follower. Text follower to 212-730-8300. I'm so excited. We'll be praying for you uh, this week as you decide to follow him. And then if you're a first time guest with us today, I hope you've had a great experience with us. And we have a free gift that we hope makes your experience even better. It's a book I co-wrote with our founding pastor, Pastor Nelson, and it's called Unshakable, Standing Strong When Things Go Wrong. All that we ask is that you take a moment and fill out your connection card and click uh, submit, and then we'll drop this in the mail to you. Or you can email us directly, email book at journeynyc.com. But just let us know that you are our guest today, and we'll send you a copy uh, to bless you today. Uh, Well, Uh, Let's take a moment right now and worship God through the giving of our tithes and offerings. This is such an important part of our service each week where uh, we get to show our faith and draw close to God through the giving of our tithes and offerings. And I want to remind you that the journey is a member-supported church. So everything that we're able to do from church online to our in-person services in Times Square every Sunday to the missions and ministries that we're a part of, it's all made possible through the faithful and generous giving of our members and our attenders. And you can give today. It's really easy. Just click that green button beside the live stream player or you can go directly to journeynyc.com 
forward slash giving. And if you've never given before, why not today give for the first time? Every amount matters. If you wanted to give a $5 or $10 gift, it matters. And uh, you can give online by debit, credit, PayPal, Cash App, Venmo, uh, Google Pay. You can also give by automating your giving online. It uh, helps you stay uh, faithful as well. Oh, and a lot of people like to give using their phones, giving by text. That's really easy to do. Just text the amount you want to give. If you want to give $20, just text the number 20, 20 to 212 730 Thank you again for your faithfulness in that area. And also, if you want to give to the next initiative, uh, you can just go to journeynyc.com forward slash next. Read more about this 20-year campaign to provide uh, a potential uh, meeting location for our church in the future. If you want to find out more and give to that today as well. Well, if... Um, if you haven't yet, let's uh, take a moment right now, finish taking any next steps, finish your online connection card so that you can uh, click, uh, uh, you, then you can click submit. Um, if you, if you want to sign up for the upcoming membership class coming up on uh, April 21st, our baptism that's coming up, baptism and worship night on Wednesday night, April 24th. We've got our young adults uh, uh, get together that's this Friday, April 19th. A lot of great things that you can get plugged in there. And by the way, if you're on Facebook or YouTube right now, I want to invite you to open up a another window and go to journeynyc.tv, journeynyc.tv. That way you can fill out your connection card. You can take some of these next steps uh, as well. Well, listen, if you found uh, today's church online service helpful, do me a favor and invite a friend. Help us get the word out this week. Uh, email uh, a friend, text the link to this service. Uh, they, can, they can come back and watch a later service uh, on our online stream if, they, if you think this message would be good for them. But then you can also invite them to come back and join you next week. Uh, next week, we're going to be continuing this I Need a Miracle teaching series with a message, When I Feel Like I'm Stuck. And we're going to look at a fascinating miracle when Jesus healed a paralyzed man. You're, you're not going to want to miss that. So I uh, invite a friend, join us next week. If you can join us in person, do so. Times Square, AMC Empire 25 Theater at 10 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. If you can't make it in person, we're going to be right back here at Church Online next weekend. Hope you have a great week uh, this week. Uh, remember, we love you and we appreciate you. God bless.